Hello, I am Emily Rhodes and I'm so happy to be making this month's webcast outside. Um, I, I should say I'm on our terrace. There are pigeons zooming around. Um, there are some builders in the background. Um, so, you know, there might be some disturbances, but I just kind of can't believe the sun and the heat and the fact that I'm literally, I've just had to like slip my tights off because <laughs> it's so warm. And it feels like such a perfect setting for this book, The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce, which is um, the April pick for Emily's Walking Book Club. And I wanted to talk about this um, kind of hot off the heels from our incredibly special event um, on Hampstead Heath with Rachel Joyce herself coming to join us for the discussion of the book. And then we had a very lovely exclusive um, preview screening of the film adaptation starring Jim Broadbent and Penelope Wilton, which I really recommend. It's a really powerful film. Um, I would say they do bring tissues because the, um, sorry, not tissues, hankies. Harold Fry would definitely, does definitely have a hanky at some point in the book rather than tissues. Um, but it's incredibly powerful and sad film in a way that I think the book, while there is that sadness at its heart, also has maybe more of an uplifting feel to it. Um, so, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this book. Um, the idea is Harold Fry, who in the film is Jim Broadbent, and he also reads the audiobook and is so kind of perfectly Harold Fry. Um, he gets a letter from someone who we learn is an old friend who he used to work with in his job at the brewery called Queenie. And it's from Beric upon Tweed. And we know straight away that Harold is in a quite kind of stale, loveless marriage with his wife Maureen, who Penelope Wilton plays brilliantly in the film. Um, their exchange about the letter manages to kind of convey everything in the silences and it's like bitterness between them is that, you know, who do we know in Barack upon Tweed? Oh, you know, it's Queenie. And um, turns out that Queenie is in fact dying. And Harold struggles to know what to say. One of the big themes of the book is how hard he finds communicating and, and what a tragedy this is for him and has been in the past. And he writes a kind of completely ludicrously inadequate letter that I wonder if I should read it out to show you. So, so you know, what, what does one write? You know, and I mean, it is ludicrous, but also it's so true, you know, and there's awful letters that one does have to write when, you know, kind of condolence letters. It feels so awful, you know, like, what are you going to say? Or how, what can you, words can't express. So he, he writes, Dear Queenie, thank you for your letter. I am very sorry, yours. And then he crosses out yours and writes, best wishes, Harold and brackets fry. Rubbish. So he goes off to post the letter and he gets to the first post box and somehow he keeps on going to the next post box and on and on and on. And suddenly he hits upon this idea inspired by a a sort of strange conversation he has with a girl in a garage that he is going to walk all the way to Berwick upon Tweed and in so doing is somehow going to save Queenie. And this sets up um, this sets up for Harold this thing that's very much at the heart of the book. Sorry, I was giving you a funny look there because my phone did something weird and I wondered if it had stopped recording. But anyway, it hasn't. Um, this sort of idea of faith and sense. And again and again in the book, there's this idea that you've got to have some more faith and a bit less sense. Um, he has this awful discussion with an oncologist, you know, halfway along his journey where the oncologist says, you know, you can't save someone from cancer without like, surgery. And if the, surg if the doctors say they can't save him, your walk is not gonna save him. Sorry, save her. But there's this 
idea that maybe he's saving her in some other way and the faith that he needs to have in that. So I think, you know, one one thing we really thought of and talked about on Hampstead Heath was this idea of faith and is it always a good idea to have faith in something or is, can faith sometimes be misplaced and about how so much in life is about this balance between faith and doubt or faith and sense and and what a balancing act that is <laughs> and, and how how hard it is to, to get it right all the time. Um, it also sets up, sets him up on a pilgrimage and Rachel talked very, very eloquently about how this book was really about the idea of pilgrimage. You know, what what is a modern pilgrimage in, in a place where not many of us really believe in in religion anymore? Can, can there still be an idea of pilgrimage? So we talked a lot about the elements of a pilgrimage, you know, which is something I actually, I'm not sure I've ever really thought about it before. Um, what makes a pilgrimage? Is it just a journey? Does there need to be some feeling of um, adverse circumstances? Do you need to be doing it for something kind of beyond yourself? Um, is it as much about the journey as about getting there? And you know, what you, you maybe you think you're going on this pilgrimage for one reason, but actually it's more about what you learn on the way. So we had a great discussion about pilgrimages. Um, and of course, this was all grounded in the fact that we were discussing this on our walk and this book is very much about Harold's walk through England. And I do think one thing the film does really well is capture these amazing views across England. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who's watching the David Attenborough Wild Isles at the moment. and feeling, you know, very, very worried about the state of England and its lack of biodiversity and how much we need to act. But it felt in a way like this was a bit of a, a love song to England and, and the landscape and the people in it. Um, so we had a, a great talk about what happens when you walk and um, how you see things differently from, and I mean, I'm we'd all had that experience of a, sorry, I think there's a helicopter. Um, we'd all had that experience of, um, you know, a journey that you always do by car. If you ever have to walk that route, how completely like radically different it is because you, you're you looking at everything on such a different scale, everything's slowed down, you see the details. Um, so this idea that walking can make you see what's around you with new clarity um, in quite a beautiful revelatory way. But what I think this book also does incredibly well is show you how, as well as this new outward vision, you get this new inward vision. And as Harold walks, he gets almost haunted, I suppose, by these memories and thoughts about this sort of deep tragedy of his past, which I won't go into here because I don't want to spoil it. Um, but yes, I suppose walking as giving this inner vision and this, it almost being quite meditative. And there's just one tiny bit I'm going to read out um, where I thought she just, it's so well written this book. I mean, I know, you know, it looks maybe a bit twee. I was put off it for years, I'm afraid to say because of the cover, but the writing is really beautiful and the, there's so much in it. Um, Maybe I shouldn't say this, but I think if it had been written by a man, it would have been packaged quite differently. And um, I'm just really glad that it has done so well and been taken as seriously as I think it deserves. Um, so this is the beginning of chapter 10. Um, it's just a paragraph. In the city, Harold's thoughts had stopped. Now that he was back on the open land, he was once again between places and pictures ran freely through his mind. In walking, he unleashed the past that he had spent 20 years seeking to avoid. And now it chattered and played through his head with a wild energy that was its own. He no longer saw distance in terms of miles. He measured it with his remembering. 
And I just, I love the way that she has trans, you know, sort of got rid of physical distance and turned it into an emotional distance and sort of memory. Um, I think mean, it's so exactly what can happen when you're walking. And I think that's also maybe why you have such great conversations when you're walking, because everything flows more freely and, you know, ideas do come up um, like that. Anyway, so we had a good talk about walking, a good talk about pilgrimage. Um, we had a good talk about faith. Um, there is, I think I could talk about this without giving too much away, there's also a really strong aspect of writing about parenting and parenthood, particularly fatherhood, in this book. And, um, and this idea of how, how hard it is to overcome kind of the hand you've been dealt in a way. You know, Harold, Harold can't communicate and he really struggles to show his love for people. And um, Rachel Joyce does a really good job of showing Harold's upbringing um, in his parents, you know, his mother who disappeared really and sent him a note badly spelt. And there's just no mother figure and his father was an alcoholic. Um, and how the fact that he had never really been shown love and affection makes it very hard for him in turn to show that to those he does love. And a big part of the book is how he grows able to to kind of come back together with Maury and his wife. They've kind of very much separated. I mean, in the book, they physically separate, but what becomes clear is that for the last 20 years or so, they've been living in the same place, but living you know, not not living together, even though they are in the in the same place. Um, it's a really interesting book and one that I would love to know what you think of it. I, I'm sure many of you have read it or have seen the film or, or about to see the film. And um, it reminds me a little bit of the book The Salt Path by Raina Wynn. Um, which is another brilliant book about walking. And I think, again, in, in both books, there's this feeling that part of what's so good about walking and going on a journey or a pilgrimage of some sort is getting away from things, from things and also from the stuff. There's a moment where Harold, although he sets off with basically nothing, he then really gets down to nothing. He sort of set posts back to his wife, his debit card and everything. He doesn't have a mobile phone. Um, and actually it was really interesting, Rachel Joyce said on the walk that, to me that the book has done incredibly well in China and she thought it was partly because phones and technology there, you know, was sort of they were stratospherically ahead of us with it, when, you know, 10 years ago when this was written and how lost and disconnected from other people this had made a lot of young young Chinese people, in, in her opinion, and um, maybe they really related to that stripping away of stuff and getting rid of technology and, and the freedom and self-knowledge that that comes with that. Um, I mean, I completely agree. It's really, it has made me want to go and, um, <laughs> I don't know, go camping and, you know, use my, use technology less and spend more time out in nature. So, you know, really sort of very timely book, even even though it was written a decade ago, the fact that now there is this um, sort of refreshed sense of urgency in how, how we handle the natural world specifically in Britain. Um, I would like really, really recommend this as a good, as a, an insightful and an inspiring, um, and a very thought provoking book. So yes, looking forward to hearing your thoughts.